part two of chapter six, The Mystery of Golden Milestone. We were near Golden Milestone now. The house was a big, weather-gray structure, overgrown with vines and climbing roses. Something about the three square windows in the second story gave it an appearance of winking at us in a friendly fashion through its vines, at least so the story girl said, and indeed we could see it for ourselves after she had once pointed it out to us. We did not get into the house, however. We met the awkward man in his yard, and he gave us a quarter apiece for our library. He did not seem awkward or shy, but then we were only children, and his foot was on his native heath. He was a tall, slender man who did not look his forty years, so unwrinkled was his high, white forehead, so clear and lustrous his large, dark blue eyes, so free from silver threads his rather long black hair. He had large hands and feet, and walked with a slight stoop. I am afraid we stared at him rather rudely while the story girl talked to him. But was not an awkward man who was also a hermit and kept blue silk dresses in a locked room and possibly wrote poetry a legitimate object of curiosity? I leave it to you. When we got away, we compared notes and found that we all liked him and this, although he had said little and had appeared somewhat glad to get rid of us. He gave us the money like a gentleman, said the story girl. I felt he didn't grudge it, and now for Mr. Campbell. It was on his account I put on my red silk. I don't suppose the awkward man noticed it at all, but Mr. Campbell will, or I'm much mistaken. 